Uh oh, guys, I just plugged it in, the whole thing's gone up. So this is the Paddlesworth winning long jump competition car, which also completely smashed the world record. Oh, that's good. And it just caught fire. So in this video, we're gonna show you what happened. This video was kind of expensive, so it's sponsored by me. Do you have a job you hate? Imagine if you could make more money from the comfort of your own home. That was my dream and it became a reality once I started selling on eBay. And I've now taught hundreds of people my secrets. So just check out the results here from some of my students. So if you're sick of that nine to five and you wanna make more money than a doctor from the comfort of your own home, then click on the link down below and I'll show you how. So this is my Paddlesworth long jump winning car, which also completely smashed the world record. And in this video, we're gonna try and make it go even faster and see if I can break my personal best on the high speed. And then we're gonna go and jump it and see how high we can jump it. And for that, we're gonna use this Sky RC GPS. So basically this works with a smartphone and within here we can see like the speed it goes, the height it goes. So when you put it into flying mode, it's gonna tell you how high you jumped and also how fast you went. And this 46 foot is how high we went with my Armour Creighton 8S. But I reckon this one can go a lot higher. I'm gonna aim it for over 50, but I reckon maybe we can get it even up to 60. We're gonna see. So at first I had a Hobby Wing Max 6 ESC in here to run it on 8S. The trouble is this overheated. Basically two speed runs, it got so hot, it just shut down. So I put in a Max 5. The trouble is with this, it's actually got a lower KV limit. So I don't know if that KV limit is there for safety or if it was restricting the motor. Because last speed run, I think we got it up to 98 mile an hour with these tires on it. But I want to get this car to go over 100 mile an hour on grass. So we've got to make it faster. And I'm not sure if it's the ESC that's holding it back. So I've got this brand new Castle Mamba XLX2. A lot of the speed run guys are using these these days. And it looks like we might just get it in there. If not, we've got a Mamba X8S. But basically, this car is an armor Typhon. And I've extended it with an M2C chassis, which is supposed to be for Mojave. Also, I've got a couple of bits on here from Custom RC Upgrades and from Scorched Parts. So if you want to know the full specs of this car and where you can get it from and all that stuff, there's going to be a link to all of that lot down below. Right, that's enough waffling. Let's get wrenching. Oh, <laughs> Guys, it's tight. It is so close to the diff in there, look. It is kind of touching, but if we can just slightly move it over a bit like that, I think we can just get it in. If not, I suppose we could turn this servo mount round. So I've just screwed on the side guard. I've just screwed on the ESC mount, and with it all screwed in, it's a little bit too tight. Look at that, it's forcing this side out here, and it's wedged right up against that diff in there. Just goes in, guys, just. So I'm now changing over all of my connectors over to these IC5s. I used to run everything on XT90s. I think XT90s have got like a 90 amp current limit and these ones here have got a 120 amp current limit. But the main reason I'm swapping is that the XT90s, when they get worn out and old, they keep coming disconnected. When you're out bashing, that's annoying. These keep a better connection for longer. Plus also, a lot of cars nowadays, armors and all the low Cs, low Cs, whatever you want to call them, they will come with these. So yes, I've got a lot of work ahead of me. I have to convert absolutely everything. All oh, right, so I got it all plugged in, got it wired up. We set the endpoints. So we got this little program card here, plug that into the PC, and then we plug the ESC into the box. So first of all, the motor's going the wrong way around, so we've got to swap that over to reverse. The rest of that will do. Auto LiPo, LiPo cutoff, back voltage, yeah, a bit more. Turn the beeping off, more brakes, don't know how much yet. And I think everything else, we can leave it as it is. So next, we can unplug it, plug it back into the receiver, and we should be good to go. Next, we've got to stick in the ESC, and for that, I like to use this stuff here. This is what Martin uses. We also put it underneath the motor, because when you have really hard landings, it stops the motor slamming into the chassis. I've killed loads of motors like that, so since I've been doing this, I've killed no motors. And 
And then I'm just going to use a little dab of this hot glue here just to hold it in place while that silicon stuff's setting. So next I'm going to leave it now to go off overnight and then tomorrow we're going to put some cable ties over it, sort out the wires, get some wheels on there and then we're going to take it out, do a speed run and then we're going to go for the high jump, weather permitting, hopefully not for the rain. There we go, ready for action and guys if you want to know where you can get any of this stuff from there's going to be a link to all of it down below. Guys, I just plugged it in, the whole thing's gone up. Oh shit. Castle cremations. Fuck, extinguisher. What? It's gone again. Guys, never again am I going to use one of those castles. First little rev up, it just burst into flames. Perfect soldering. All oh, right, so basically what happened, I had it inside the shop. I plugged in the battery. I put it on the floor. I gave it a little drive. It worked. I then picked it up by the wing, give it a quick rev up. It worked. And then the ESC made a funny noise. Went, this big flame come out of it. I panicked, come running out of the shop, threw it on the floor. The minute it hit the floor, the lipos both caught fire, flames everywhere. And I thought, I better get footage. So I legged it back in, got the camera, came out, and then that's what you saw. But luckily, we've got CCTV. So let's see what we captured. Let's have a look. So at the moment here, I'm just doing the last little finishing touches look. We'll just put in some zip ties around the motor. So I'd already powered it up the day before. And it all kind of worked all right. So I put the wheels and tyres on. Now I'll do my little montage thing. Let's put the light pose in. Right, so this is where it's all kicking off. So there we go, it's all plugged in, it's armed, it works. I gave it a little squirt, just to make sure that it drives. Then I'll pick it up, give it a little rev. And there you go, look, it's gone up. And now there I go, licking it outdoors. Then I'm running out with it. Oh dear. <laughs> panic, panic. Lobbed it out. First thing on my mind, I've got to get the camera. If the thing's going to burn to a crisp, you've got to get the footage. And there we go. I was filming from there on in. Oh, shit. Guys, I think it's savable. I mean, the whole thing is fairly singed. I think we're going to need new top arms. The tyres, they were on fire. Uh, yeah, I think they're done. Battery tray, definitely done. Side guard's done. Centre diff's kind of melted. Still moves though. Motor's got a bit toasty, but probably still all right. That thing's definitely toasted. Servo, bit singed, but probably still work. Chassis's fine by the looks of it. The scorched titanium drive shafts, they're still straight. Oh look, there's a, yeah, diff fluid's been coming out of there. But I think with a bit of a clean up, we should be able to get it back in action. That's what's left of the lipo. Oh. <laughs> I've got another XLX2 inside this crate and A test, but guys, I don't know if I can trust it now. This one's been good so far. I think we'll leave it in there, see how we get on. I don't know. What do you reckon, guys? I've got another one here that I was actually planning on doing a twin motor build with, but I don't think I'm going to bother now. So I think I might just stick it back in this buggy here, use it with it still singed, and just give it another chance. And then if it does catch fire again, I mean, it can't get any worse than what it already is, can it? So guys, let me know if you want to see that. Also, let me know what you reckon caused that fire. And guys, we're going to rebuild it, 
but this time it's going to be even better. The car's not gone, it's not rest in peace, it looks really bad, it is pretty bad, uh, but it's going to be back very soon. We're going to give it one run, I think, with the other XLX2. If it catches fire again, we'll put it out, we'll forget about those ESCs altogether. We'll put a different ESC in it, we'll rebuild it, we'll make it really nice, we'll polish it all up again, and it's going to be ready for another long jump competition and, and more speed runs. But it's going to be even better, guys, so uh, don't be too upset, guys. Um, it's, it's coming back. Subscribe and smash the bell so that you don't miss round two. But for now, if you click on one of these videos here, I will see you over there in a sec.